All right. I'm uh, releasing this today uh, because it's a hot take. But uh, I was originally going to do this Monday, but it's like, no, this is too long. I'll do a follow-up on Monday if, if things advance. But I'm talking about this nonsense. I know I'm telegraphing how I feel about it, but this uh, nonsense theater meeting, Trump meeting with the video game industry about violence and think of the children and how to do something about the youth. Okay, you guys? Like, we have to do something about the youth in this country. Watch it. Why am I doing Cartman instead of Trump? You know? Huge problem. I don't do Donald Trump impressions. Okay, moving on. There's nothing fun about that. Leave that for Alec Baldwin. But, um, uh, shameless shill, please. Um, support me on Patreon. Patreon.com, Leanna K. Okay, thanks. Because this will probably get flagged. But, uh, YouTube's been better about that with me lately. But, you never know when it's gonna hit. So, but, uh, yeah, we're... Does this feel like the 1990s to anybody else? Because I, I swear we resolved this in the 1990s. What basically happened is Trump had a meeting with game industry professionals, including, um, let, me, let me show you the clip so you don't just have to take my word for it, including... Uh, Strauss Zelnick, the CEO of, they won't even say Rockstar Games, the company that makes the game Grand Theft Auto, and Robert Altman, chairman and CEO of the parent company that produces games like Fallout. Robert Altman is not Bethesda. I don't know who the parent company is, but, um, yeah. Um, and there's, there's hot takes like Trump talking about the, he has a young, very young son who, I look at some of the things he's watching and I say, how is that possible? I just said I don't do Trump impressions, sorry. And this is what kids are watching. And I think you maybe have to take a look at it. You know, you rate movies for different things. Maybe you have to also rate them for terror, for what they're doing and what they're all about. It's hard to believe that at least for a percentage, maybe it's a small percentage of children, this doesn't have a negative impact on their thought process, but, things, but these things are really violent, says the guy who offered to pay the legal fees of anybody who beat up uh, undesirables at his campaign rallies. But question number one, let's just deep dive into this right away. Question number one, if you don't like what your kid's watching, oh, is this watching, not playing? So these aren't video games, these are something else. But if you don't like what your kid's watching, why are you letting them watch it? Why aren't you parenting? Secondly, you rate movies for different things. Graphic violence is one of them. S horrifying scenes is actually one of them. So Trump is showing that he doesn't actually know what he's talking about here, which is fine. He doesn't have to know what he's talking about at the beginning of a discussion. But he's clearly not informed on this matter, and I don't think that the the people that were assembled for this meeting are going to really um, inform him. One of the groups um, who were in attendance were the Parents Television Council, who ran a clip reel of, of video game violence. Um, and what the parents television council is is uh where is it about us the ptc mission here we go to protect children and families from graphic sex violence and profanity in the media because of the proven long-term harmful effects so they are using the same old song and dance about cultivation theory cultivation uh theory studies done on television misapplying them to video games. Thing that kills me about this approach. Rah, instant rage in this. When, what is it, uh, Gerbner, the main guy on that study, 
when they unveiled that landmark cultivated effects of television study in the 1980s, the first major pillar of the theater, theater theory, I'm mad, I'm misspeaking, but was that television is a unique form of media. I just punched the mic, sorry. It's unique. It is special. Because at the time, in the 1980s, it came into our homes and everybody watched it essentially at the same time. It was a shared experience. Now that is important because if the theory surrounds the unique and special qualities of television, you cannot apply it to other forms of media. But these parents groups go in, they are not experts on video games. They are not. They are not, they are not, they are not, they are not, they are not. They are concerned parents, which yes, great emotional appeal, not necessarily big on logic. They're not experts on video games. They're a TV parents group that extrapolated. And of course, what is this rep from the Parents Television Council say? Those from the video game industry were quick to defend the video game industry, saying they were meant for mature audiences and they weren't intended for kids to see. That's true! If you're letting your kid engage with media that is not intended for children, that is your fault, not the media's. And that is not the fault of the product. That is a larger sign of really shitty parenting that is probably using media as a babysitter and, and not being aware of what your kids are watching. Or if, if you are aware of your kids are watching, you're not doing anything about it. Like, Trump is letting us on, on into more than he thinks about his private life when he's shocked by what his son is consuming. Why don't you know? There's a lot of things I could say, but that's besides the point. Then, see, th this is a completely unscientific approach because you invite video game executives who have profit participation in the outcome of this instead of inviting in experts who actually study this, who don't have a financial horse in the race, who can pretty much tell you that there is no link. But here's my theory. This is a dead end because First Amendment speech protections are going to kick in thanks to the conservative Supreme Court. You know, the ongoing legacy of Alito. He, he wrote the decision. Conservatives are, are not going to jump in here. So it's a safe thing to distract from the larger issue of guns and violence because the pearl clutchers on the left and the pearl clutchers on the right can agree on this. Video games might have an impact. Well, you don't have to do anything based on might. I mean, this is exactly the sign of, you know, after what was it? Um, Sandy Hook, Obama wanted more studies. And so those more studies were done. And guess what? Yeah, it was Sandy Hook. Um, what did those more studies find? No link. No link. CNN actually has a chart. CNN actually did journalism that shows the comparison. Yes, you see the U.S. all the way up. Now, this is not mass shootings. This is not mass shootings, to be very clear. These are straight-up homicide rates. So this is not restricted to, you know, the, but, but it, would be, it would be essentially the same. The, the x-axis, the bottom, is dollars spent on video games per 100 people. So it's adjusted for 100,000 people. Adjusted for population. Then a homicide by firearm. Boop, you is way up here! But it's middle of the pack in terms of dollars spent on video games per 100,000 people. Japan and South Korea are ahead. South Korea is actually ahead of the United States. But then... United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, you know, not far behind. Not far behind. So, we can safely say no correlation between dollars spent on video games and gun violence. That's pretty conclusive. Now, 
the the type of games that are popular in Japan and South Korea are different types of games than than in the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, etc. But Canada's close enough to the U.S. that you would expect more of a correlation. Canada would be closer if this is actually what's doing it. Gee, maybe, maybe, just maybe. Hear me out. Call me crazy, <coughs> but maybe gun violence. Mass shootings, but gun violence in general, is this complicated soup of factors that includes income inequality, public safety, uh, social norms, uh, cultural priorities in various countries, a relationship to guns is a component, the number of guns is a component, and the relationship a country has with its media and then a bunch of things i i won't even touch on masculinity and all that stuff though i i do think it's it's really really relevant i mean fox news and i i give them this one they they also drew a correlation something like 26 of the 27 uh deadliest mass shooters grew up without their father in the picture now this is you know this is one of those weird things that well, all kids, obviously, the majority of kids who don't grow up with the, who grow up without their fathers, uh, don't become mass shooters. But that's a stronger correlation than even gun ownership. And I'm not saying that's a whole. I like I said, I don't think there is a single answer. I think that's the problem. The U.S. is going to have to address a lot of its underlying inequality to really deal with its violence issues. Because there's a lot of countries with a lot of poverty that don't have the same kind of violence issues. It's the inequality. It's the, the gap between the have and the have-nots. And what poverty does what relative poverty does in the u.s and of course that intersects with with race and and a whole bunch of other things you notice i didn't even touch on the mental health thing and i'm very concerned about that because i think that anything that um factors into this is why we can't have nice things territory in in mental health anything that discourages someone from actually seeking help help for their mental health issues is not useful because you want to get people into, you know, into programs. So here's my wacky suggestion for this nonsense. Make video games part of the solution. Have programs. They don't necessarily have to be run in school. But school adjacent. Community centers. I'd prefer they be in school because, you know, I played uh, Carmen San Diego and the Oregon Trail and stuff like that in school. And back then we died of dysentery. Did we, did we all, you know, become afraid of, oh, that's another interesting thing about cultivation theory. Parents television council. Those studies did not find a correlation between consumption of violent media and violent behavior. Those studies found a correlation between consumption of violent media and fear of violence. So maybe this parent's television council just watched too much damn TV. But here's my solution. Have video game labs in the guidance counselor's office. So if kids want to come in and play video games, they can. Have video games at youth centers. And don't limit them to non-violent video games. So you can observe a kid's reaction to something like, not Grand Theft Auto, because I, I really don't, as somebody who's played Grand Theft Auto, a 14-year-old will not understand Grand Theft Auto. They will understand, oh, wow, wrecking cars is fun. Right? Smashy, smashy, spinny, spinny, flyy, flyy. That's what they get. But the underlying themes, the dialogue, all that stuff, they're whoosh, way over their head. They're not getting it. Something like Halo with a more simplistic story 
is more appropriate for a 14 year old. So let him play something like Halo. Big broad characters, aliens, pew pew laser, that's more their speed. I know that's an M rated game, but it's, it's definitely less complex than what GTA has going on. But let him play it. And if you see a kid have an odd reaction to, you know, to this content. If you see them perseverating or, or fixating on the idea of violence, you can identify that and intervene. It's a great early warning sign for troubled kids. And if we stop being so damn afraid of the content, if we stop inverting cause and effect on this one, we can identify these kids who are drawn to violent content because either it reminds them of something they've seen in real life, which happens in a lot of uh, uh, lower income places, whether they've seen daddy beat up on mummy or mummy beat up on daddy or daddy beat up on daddy, you know, and so on. Or just things like, because 14, 15 years old, that's when you start getting early, the early onset of things like schizophrenia, certain psychotic disorders, things like that. You can intervene if you let kids play what they like and talk to them about it. If this becomes a part of the school experience, but in order to do this, we have to bring back extracurricular after-school programs with people trained to, and then you got to get the kids to go, which is why I'm saying it should be an in-school thing. Could you imagine if kids could take a course where they basically played video games? They think that's what they're doing, but it's no different than any sort of media literacy, creative writing course, anything like that. It's essentially it would be an English credit because they have to produce essays on it. But could you imagine if they could take a course? Holy crap, you'd get all these young men thinking they were taking a bird course and they're the ones who are not necessarily academically inclined that you may want to intervene and mentor. Just saying. This is a proactive solution, but oh no, the parent television council won't like it because the solution is not to take away something fun. It, oh, what will my friends think? What will my nosy neighbor think? What will the old bitty at church think? That's what drives these people's thinking. And so we're going to get another thing where there's going to be all this talk and it, Trump might try to slap on some dumb regulation on something. It'll get overridden at the Supreme Court because it already has. There's precedent for this. Thanks, Jack Thompson. Believe it or not, he did us all a favor with his lunacy. But, you know, this is the same crap that, that Andrea Dworkin and Catherine McKinnon tried to do with porn back in the 1970s. They wanted to make it you know, public hazard designation, public health hazard to override the free speech laws and it worked for a time and then it really didn't work. Same thing's going to happen. Now, I don't think Trump's smart enough to know this. Uh, I shouldn't say smart enough. He's wily. He's a wily son of a bitch, but um, he's not informed enough on this issue. He doesn't even know what his own kid's watching. But... I think he, he's very good at reading the pulse of the public, and I think he figured out a certain cohort that he can use from distract to distract. Because what I've noticed about Trump is, as president, he doesn't like making hard decisions. He loves making decisions that seem easy. You know, steel tariffs, easy. Not so much, but he thinks they're easy. Um... He loves making grand pronouncements about stuff he knows stuff about. So anything to do with building a building, he uh, takes a hard line. Oh, no, no exemptions. Canada won't be exempt. Mexico won't be exempt. Mexico and Canada are 
exempt for the foreseeable future. Like, which is the right call, but he wouldn't have gotten nearly enough attention for tough talk had he said that from the beginning instead of going, nope, 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 Gary Cohn quits, nope, nope, nope. Oh, no, that's an exception. He's he's real brave about that because these are relatively easy. The, the economic impact is a cent per can of beer on aluminum. Cars, about 200 bucks a car, which is seriously more money, but how often do you buy a car? Something like the DREAM Act, much more complicated. There are no, there is no easy pull on that one. With, with the steel tariff thing, he knows that both his base and Bernie Sanders' base has a protectionist streak in it. He will get a win with the people that matter there, with the people that vote for him. With something like Dreamers, the data is way more murky. It, it has been something that's been as an impasse, and so he's stalling and stalling and stalling and waiting for somebody to, to come up with an ideal, to bail it out. And he got really lucky with that Supreme Court thing, or this would be a very different conversation right now. Trump is a lucky SOB. I am envious of his luck. But um, that is a much harder one. The, the gun violence thing, the gun control debate, he went for the low-hanging fruit. Like, we should ban bump stocks. Most people don't know what, didn't know what a bump stock was until Vegas. That's easy. But he's really good at, at reading a certain portion of the population, and he knows that's his base and is the only ones he has to read. Fuck everybody else. They don't matter. That's good politics. That's that's good politics, uh, because when it when it comes to elections, you want to motivate your base and alienate everybody else from working by making everybody from voting by making everybody else look bad. That's the secret sauce for for politics. He's actually pretty good at it, despite what people say. Uh, and and I mean, I think this distraction on video games also. Gives him a headline that doesn't have anything to do with Stormy Daniels. Not a bad thing. You know, he wins back some of these some of these soccer moms who think he's uh, a, a potential pig after, you know, and, and never mind hypocrite after that whole thing with Bill Clinton. But, uh, you know, they give his soccer mom, see, he cares, sort of thing. Playing on that, that, you know sexist attitude a lot of women have of all men cheat all men can cheat if you if you if you let them you have to watch them like a hawk like why wasn't she watching him why was she letting her husband hang around with porn stars you know he's he's instinctually relying on that but video games those exact same women who will say why did melania let him consort with porn stars as if she has a choice will go Video games have to cause violence. It's it's the same cohort. But he doesn't actually have to do anything on this thing. And that's why it's brilliant. Trying is enough. Because somebody knows he's going to bump up against the First Amendment at, at some point. And that's the only reason I'm not more scared about this because people reference what happens in Ger what happened in Germany with regulation in Australia, the crazy stuff in the European Union, stuff in Ireland, you know, this kind of stuff. Is it Ireland or North Ireland? Ireland. Um, but they don't have the same free speech protections. So they could regulate games in a way that America won't. Because same, you know, same way they can't. <sighs> Criminal Minds is on at two in the afternoon. So is Law and Order. They're all about murder. So. That's, that's my thought. I'm not going to get too worked up about it because this has all happened before. This has all happened again. I am very frustrated that this is a giant distraction 
that keeps coming up and keeps throwing a wrench in the works and keeps distracting from real talk about stuff. And the ga critics in the game industry are aiding and abetting this crap by not taking a hard line on this. It's like, let's talk about the real link between games and violence. No, no, there isn't any. There isn't any. There isn't any. There isn't any. This is freaking rock music is the devil's music all over again. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You're, you're not helping. You're actually doing the opposite of helping. Shut your mouth. Know when to shut up. That's just... If you want to produce... I, I wouldn't even dignify this. Because anybody who's actually played a video game knows. If I were the video game industry, I would push back hard on parents who don't read the damn labels. You know what else you can do when you don't read the label? Drink bleach. You, you're gonna blame... A bleach, if it was right on the freaking label, don't drink this, and someone guzzles a bottle of Clorox, do you blame the bleach company? Well, yeah, and more like, that's why all the tamper proof, but that's a kid. An adult, if an adult drinks bleach, do you blame the bleach? No! You know, don't eat Tide Pods. Do we see a damn ban on Tide Pods? Who knows? The whole McDonald's coffee thing? But, like, if people don't read the labels what are you supposed to do if if parents let their kids watch say game of thrones you can't stop that all you can do is put clear warnings clear labels on the programming that this is not appropriate for children that's all you can do movies they can keep kids out I don't agree with that. I think that that should be up to the parents. I really do believe strongly. The crazy thing is, is you can legislate that a kid can't see a movie, but you can't legislate that a parent vaccinate their children. That is a crazy disconnect for me. It, you, there should be consistency, but there isn't. As, you know, it's one of those things where as much as the anti-vaccination thing drives me crazy just because the amount of junk science that's out there. I do think that, that parents should have the right to not not vaccinate their children, but extend the timeline if they so choose. I, I just think it makes good sense to vaccinate your kids, but parental choice is a very real thing. Respecting the rights of parents is a very real thing. And the fact that the, the, the United States doesn't trust parents to read damn labels on video games. How stupid does the government think Americans are? Maybe I don't want an answer to that.